What's going on guys? Today we are working on Miata again and this time we are going to be addressing this guy here. This is the speedometer cable. If you have one of these cars then you probably know exactly what we are experiencing with the vehicle. Cue the Snapchat video now. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and knock that out today, and um, hopefully I can get a test drive in before it rains, but if it doesn't, then we'll just have to do a test drive tomorrow, or whenever it dries up. Um, the reason why I can't do the test drive, in case you didn't know, there's no back window over here, so you definitely don't want to get any water in the cabin, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get this knocked out. I'm going to do a kind of a how-to, more of an overview, um, try to get you all the... Uh, locations of where you need to uh you know be focusing on when doing this install uh it's really not that bad uh it's really just uh be careful especially when you're dealing with the interior bits you know 30 year old car plastic um things tend to uh not hold together when you have to remove them when they've been put together for so long so uh we'll go ahead um i'm actually going to start inside the car while you know i'm still kind of not you know still kind of clean not covered in dirt or grime and then um we'll jack the car up and get underneath it so let's go ahead and start inside the cabin yes the seat is horrendous yes the floor is doing a floor thing and in case you're wondering yes the door jams got painted with the car too as for the seat that's what that guy's for we'll get to that eventually here um but we're gonna go ahead and start in the cabin actually we might as well just go ahead and pop the hood as well um it could definitely be a lot easier if you have like a quick release because you don't have a steering wheel to navigate around. But uh, basically what you're going to do, you need to remove the hood so you can pop the uh, speedometer gauge cluster out. So uh, basically to get the hood off, you have to uh, take off these panels here, a couple screws here and here. And then I believe there's a couple more screws back here. And then this should all just kind of pop out. Be very careful. Take your time. Don't rush things and you should be able to get that off. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the phone down, get it knocked out and check in in a little bit. So the upper and lower trim pieces for the steering column, I guess, have been replaced or removed. There's actually a little access door up here that is laying in the passenger seat that came off when I took it apart. It's two pieces, so like a clamshell. Underneath, this is what you're looking for. You have four bolts or fasteners that you have to remove. And once you get those removed, you can go ahead and just carefully pry them apart and you're now exposed here. Probably gonna kind of clean this up. It's very dusty here, uh, but yes. Now the next step is to remove the gauge cluster hood. Uh, I believe it's only two bolts. There's a bolt here I can feel and there's a bolt down here I can feel and I don't think I see anything else. Unless there's something hidden underneath, but we'll find out once we get there. So, be right back. And just like that, the hood is removed. And it was removed in one piece. Going around the back, uh, yeah, you had those two fasteners at the bottom. You made it nice and loose, and then it looks like there's one, two, and three of those spring retainer style clips that clip it to the uh, rest of the dashboard. Um, I don't know if I just got lucky or you know i'm not sure what your case would be but if you do attempt to do this i would say either have a new one on call just in case yours cracks coming off or um usually with those spring style clips you kind of have to pull it with a purpose you know you can't have to kind of commit to it and also i use both hands and you just kind of equal pressure on both sides so you don't have one side really straining as much uh, and it came out just fine and then um, you might notice that the stalks might be in the way, just kind of rotated off to the side and it slides right out. But uh, anyway, now the gauge cluster is pretty much exposed. Um, you have the bolt here, the bolt here, the bolt here, and the bolt here. And then the cluster will come out just a little bit because it's still connected in the back. And then you can work on getting the speedometer cable that's connected back here off. And then what we'll do is we'll get underneath the hood, pull it through the firewall, then we'll jack up the car, get underneath, and work on getting it out of the transmission, and then do the reverse. So again, be right back. We're outside of the car now. The speedometer is pulled out as much as you can. That 
it will allow it with the cables uh, keeping it still in. Um, right back here, where actually where my shop light is, there it is. That's your speedometer cable there. So all you gotta do is remove that little guy back there. And then that should pull right out of the firewall once we pop the hood. But uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at here. Um, at this step here, if you're looking to do anything with, you know, replacing the, the lights, uh, the light bulbs, uh, if you wanted to replace your, or remove your gauge cluster, this is basically the steps that you would take still. Uh, just obviously remove all the other connectors and then the whole unit will come out and uh, you can, you know, change the uh, face plates or um, whatever else people like to do with these cars. But we're just focusing on that speedometer cable today. Here's another little tip that I have whenever you're replacing parts like this, um, especially if it's a connector that you've never seen before or not too familiar with, and uh, it's like in a tight space, you can't really get you know good eyes on it or anything. Grab the new part and just inspect it. So this is the part that's obviously going into the gauge cluster, and it looks like it's just this push pin or push tab, sorry, just the push tab, and it looks like that releases it from something. So more than likely, I just have to shove my hand back there, push and pull, and that should free it from the gauge cluster. Um, installation should be nice and easy because it looks like I should just go one way back in. And while I'm here, I might as well look at what goes into the transmission. Looks like it's just a threaded, uh, almost looks like a, like a watering hose type of adapter. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's just a threaded portion there. Um, if you're wondering about this part, I think I got this off of either I can't remember if I got this from Treasure Coast or off of eBay, but this is the part number that I got, NA01-60-070B, -0 -0 -B, Mazda genuine part. So that should fit, that's what they said works for this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled, start pulling it through the firewall, and then we'll just keep uh, knocking out the uh, steps here. So oddly enough, the thing that keeps the gauge cluster from coming out to be able to get the speedometer cable out is the speedometer cable itself. I even undid the little, the little side, I guess, power supplies for the gauge cluster. That didn't give me enough wiggle room. Um, I eventually got it out, and here's how I did it. And um, it's an extra step you may or may not want to take. I have seen people, uh, they've been able to get it off without doing this, but this is how I did it. Um, my car is already missing this center panel here. Um, so you can probably just pop yours off. Looks like there's just a couple of clips and screws that hold that in. But actually, um, if you take this panel off, you can actually snake your hand up and you can actually access the bottom portion of the throttle cable, or not throttle cable, the speedometer cable, because the release tab is facing underneath of all places. And there's this weird little kind of carrier bit that it sits on. I guess to keep it from rattling and moving around. So it kind of makes it hard to grab from the top and kind of snake your finger around. Um, so what I did was I basically kind of went in both ways from the top and the bottom and ended up getting my finger from the bottom to push in the tab. And I pulled from the top and it, come, it came out real easily. Um, this car has over 260,000 miles and none of this fought me getting out. So um, that's just something to think about this car was not a garage princess before I got it. It sat outside for a long time. It's been rained on, snowed on. Um, so definitely, you know, it's possible to do it on these older cars and not you know, have to fight everything. So anyway, this is free now. And I'm just gonna snake it out through the engine bay, then uh, jack up the car and we'll get down to the transmission and uh, we should be, the lighting in the tunnel's coming here soon. So I think this is the hardest part to be honest with you. Uh, everything else is just putting it back together. I would assume, snaking it back through and attaching it is easier than removing it. So um, let's go ahead and pull it out of the engine bay. Okay, so we're in the engine bay and we, sh you know, process of elimination, it's more than likely this one here, because those are definitely heater core hoses. So this is just a little retainer. I'm gonna pop that. Yep, pop that. And you can see there's a little retainer clip here. And it's probably easier with two hands, but I'm gonna show you that you can get this done with one hand. And we're just gonna go ahead and start pulling. And there she is. There is our speedometer cable. Looks like it just routes under the heater hoses and somewhere along the firewall here, and it's gonna snake down that way. So just keep in mind of how you have it routed. 
um, when you go to snake it back up again. So I was just gonna come across this way here and it's gonna tuck in down somewhere there. So uh, now that we got that all done, let's go ahead and jack up the car, get underneath. And I know that the cable lies somewhere on this side of the vehicle of the transmission. Okay, now I got the car on ramps. Let's see if I can crawl underneath and show you exactly while doing this as graceful as possible. So we're coming down over the passenger side. All right. And as soon as you get underneath here, got my flashlight in hand. Oh, fingers in the way. There we go. Okay, so we have your power plant frame right here. That's this guy. And this cable right here is your speedometer cable. So you can see it snakes in there and it ties into your transmission there. That's that threaded hose adapter looking thing I was showing you guys earlier. And it's just a series of clips that go up along the, I guess the side of the transmission tunnel, frame rail, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to go up into your engine bay. So basically all you got to do is unscrew it from there, undo the clips that are here, and it should just pull out from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that knocked out and show you what it looks like out of the vehicle. If you're like me, work smarter, not harder. Be lazy about it. Figure out ways to get things done quicker and easier. So as you know, there's a little bit of a you know, bolt head on this section here. It looks like this is like a thread of portion. You can use your fingers to tighten it in. But instead of crawling underneath with all my wrenches to figure out what size that is or going with an adjustable wrench, just take it over to your tools and figure out what it is. Um, most of my wrench kits go up to like a 19 millimeter, which that is not. I have one abnormally large single wrench. I don't know why I have it, but I have it for something. I can't remember why I bought it, but it's this 22 millimeter. And this is actually the first tool other than the Phillips head screwdriver that I've needed for this job. Again, the Miata is just super easy to work on. Headlights were Phillips heads. The speedometer cable essentially is gonna be Phillips heads, your hands, and this 22 millimeter wrench. And uh, that's what's so nice about these cars. So I'm gonna go ahead, break it loose the old cable. I'm gonna just yank it from up here. And then just when you yank it out, you know, don't go crazy. Just keep in mind of the routing. Uh, you don't wanna get snagged up or rub up against something back here that you don't want it to. So, you know, get a flashlight, kind of look at where it's at. I'm gonna try to take note and tell you guys, but other than that, let's get this out. Okay, so I got it loose and removed from the transmission. It was barely tight at all. Probably, it, I don't even know what the torque spec is on that, but it, I, didn't, I was expecting a fight to get it off and first turn, it just came right off and I used my fingers to untwist the rest of it off. Um, there's two retainer clips that keep it along the transmission tunnel underneath. You'll see it while you follow the routing. And if you come into here, I'm gonna try to get a good angle of it and if the camera would focus, that, let's see, that retainer, oh, that's my hand. And this right here, basically where my flashlight's pointing, that's the cable as well too. So that's another section that's gonna be secured. Um, you'll actually see on the new cable, where do I put it here? You have these little retainers or um, I guess spots where they clip in. So that's how you can kind of gauge where you need to be clipping them in or locations. If you have one that is opened or you know not being clipped in, you probably missed a clip somewhere, which is nice. Beauty of buying OEM. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and uh, start feeding it through. Obviously you wanna start with transmission side first, work your way up to the top, then feed it through your firewall back into your gauge cluster. I just figured, I think I'm just going in depth with this install, even though I probably said this is gonna be a quick overview, but um, I wanna be as thorough as possible. So if you end up doing this yourself, you kinda of know what to expect. Um, so obviously, you know, make sure the old part and the new part match up. I just did that. All the connections are the same. Um, and here are all the other guys here. Um, this one definitely is crusty, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, I can see why she was hollering. And uh, look at a nice clean new boy. Apparently there's a way you can clean these, I, I heard. I think that's what happens, like they get dry on the inside or something like that and you can flush them out and clean them, but you, you spend all this time to pull it out. Why put in the same thing when 
you can get one of these for like, I think it was like a hundred bucks or something like that. So, um, just another tip um, when it comes to removing it. Um, the routing is actually very simple. So you have the firewall go underneath the heater hoses, that location back here on the firewall, the retainer clip for it kind of, I'll use my finger, it's kind of like this. So when you do it, you want to make sure that the cable falls like towards and then like sits outwards so it kind of locks in. And then after that, you're just gonna string it through down through here and then you'll see the clips underneath by the passenger side transmission tunnel. So again, we're just gonna go ahead. Now everything is off. We're just gonna do the reverse of what we all just did here and that is it. Of course, it started to rain, so I'm probably not gonna get the test drive done today, but at least I'll have it back together and we'll test it once it dries up. All right, so the speedometer cable is fully installed. I just gotta tie back all the interior pieces, but uh, underneath it's tied back into the transmission. It's routed up on those two clips on the transmission tunnel coming up to the firewall. It's secured to that little U bracket thingamajig back here. It goes to the firewall back into the gauge cluster. Uh, one thing to keep in mind of that I found a little difficult while you're underneath is that the speedometer cable is keyed. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of a notch. Um, you do have to line that notch into a little socket on the transmission, um, and it's a tight fit, um, it's a key. So uh, that's probably the hardest part, kind of trying to position that in the correct way uh, to get it to secure correctly. Once it's in there, you know, because then everything kind of sits flush and you can actually start tightening down by hand. Uh, that nut, I honestly do not know the torque spec, but it was never tight to begin with, so I just snugged it down. Uh, I really doubt that it needs to be anything crazy. Um, going back here to your gauge cluster, um, on my car, the release tab was facing downwards, and I was thinking that that was where the actual um, connection was for it. Uh, the way how, like, the... I guess that that's a male end because the speedometer cable is a female end. The way how that end is uh, oriented, it's um, there's a groove along the whole outside of it. So you can actually orient the speedometer cable in any way. Uh, so now actually you can get it from the side. Uh, so if I ever need to pull the gauge cluster again, it's gonna be a lot easier. Um, speaking of the gauge cluster, just a side note, I had extra LEDs laying around, so I started messing around. Um, didn't get them all done. But uh, yeah, I got like this one done, the oil pressure or oil temperature and the inside of this one. Um, there are 158 bulbs, um, 195 is what I had and they were 194. One, I forget what it is, but anyway, those ones fit just fine. And um, you know, the, I would start to still get the uh, ones for the gas and the coolant if I do plan on doing that again. But honestly, I really don't feel like pulling out this gauge cluster again. So anyways, um, that's pretty much the install. I am kind of upset that it's still raining, so I won't be able to get the footage of the driving yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Everything's wrapped up in the engine bay. I just gotta get the interior done. And um, I guess the next clip you'll see is me driving it, showing you that the speedometer is nice and quiet. And that's gonna help a lot because for the first couple of events, I'm gonna be actually driving this to most of the events to begin with until I can get a trailer. And last thing you want is to drive 45 minutes to an hour and a half listening to that squealing for the whole time. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna show you the final product with the driving footage. Okay guys, it's a couple of days after I installed the speedometer cable and I'm finally getting some time to actually test drive the car real quick. So as you already know, the gauge cluster light bulbs were semi-replaced. Those are the new headlights. They're pretty bright just sitting here in the cabin. Let's just see if the tack works. Okay, tack works. Uh, the real test would be the speedometer here if it's going to squeak at me or do a little bouncing. So let's go ahead and get some driving done real quick. That about does it for installing or removing this crusty old thing. 
and installing a brand new speedometer cable in a Mazda Miata. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and drop a like, leave any comments, if you have questions, concerns, insights about life. And if you like the channel, you know, might as well subscribe to it and uh, keep up to date with this autocross build. I still got a whole bunch of parts over there, some stuff inside, so definitely got a lot of stuff coming for you guys. Until next time, see you later.